Welcome to this initiative of the Center for Science and Environment on the occasion of the World Antimicrobial Awareness Week 2020. CSE is a non-for-profit public research and advocacy organization based out of New Delhi, India. As part of this initiative, we are doing a series of conversations under the theme Act on AMR, where we are engaging with global experts across the world to understand their views and perspectives on what needs to be done uh, in order to contain this grave issue. My name is Rajeshwari Sinha and I work here at the Food Safety and Toxins team, as part of which we have been working on this area of antimicrobial resistance for about a decade now. Uh, we focus largely on the animal and environmental aspects of the problem and also the antibiotic resistance part of it. This conversation that we're going to do today is going to focus a little bit on uh, on the role of veterinarians in, in being able to help contain the misuse of antibiotics in animals. And to tell us more, we have with us today an expert from Zambia. We extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Natombe Mudenda. Dr. Mudenda is from the School of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Zambia in Lusaka. She also wears multiple hats. She is the president of the Veterinary Association of Zambia, and she also sits on the board of the Zambia Medicines Regulatory Authority. A very warm welcome to you, uh, Dr. Mudenda. Thank you, Rajeshwari. Mudenda, at the very outset, uh, uh, for our viewers, what I wanted to say is this conversation we wanted to have with you more specifically because we wanted our viewers to have the understanding from Zambia, uh, your experiences of engagement as, as a veterinarian, and also your experiences from Africa of engaging with African experts beyond uh, Zambia. And to begin with, uh, at the very outset, please tell us, you know, what according to you is the most important role of a veterinarian. Of course, there are many roles, but when it comes to recommending or prescribing antibiotics judiciously, what is the most important thing that a veterinarian should keep in mind and should do? Um, speaking from the Zambian context, um, the veterinarian is very important in fighting antimicrobial resistance. Um, the first thing, of course, that they do is to treat animals. Um, and in that regard, they must take into consideration what other treatment the animal has had uh, before they institute their own treatment. But then also, uh, it is very important to educate the client on um, the, the administration of the medication, how long the medication should be given, on things like withdrawal periods, meaning how long should it be before the animal can be consumed or before the animal products can be consumed. And also um, for them to understand the danger that it eventually is to human health. So that is the role of the veterinarian in general um, in fighting antimicrobial resistance. Right. And, and do you think this, this kind of a role is, is followed to the T? I mean, does circumstances or situation around, uh, particularly in, in countries like uh, India or Zambia, where um, there are concerns with sanitation, hygiene, uh, uh, high, high uh, animals being prone to diseases. Do you think this kind of uh, guidelines for the veterinarians, that they work? Um, there are many factors that come into play um, when an animal needs to be treated. Um, it's not as simple as a relationship between the veterinarian and the client. Um, there's much more to that. We also have to take into consideration um, the facilities around um, that support that kind of relationship. Um, we also have to consider the availability of drugs and then also the availability of, of laboratories that can actually do uh, testing for um, uh, culturing and sensitivity for for uh, uh, antibiotics. So taking all those things into consideration, it is not that simple to say this, this can be done 
um, to just tell the clients that they need to do this, that and the other, and it ends there. No, you have to take the environment into consideration. Um, for instance, um, a lot of farmers keep animals because it's really a source of their livelihood. Um, it's their source of income and, and all. So when you advise them to do certain things, for instance, observe a, a withdrawal period, you also have to make sure that this can be monitored because um, left to themselves, usually they will not withdraw, uh, they will not observe the withdrawal period for milk, for eggs um, or meat. So these are things that need to be explained very well to the farmer. So they understand that um, this, this problem is something that they could potentially pass on to so many of their customers. Um, who would consume these products without knowing that this animal had been subjected to uh, antimicrobial treatment um, very recently. So it's, it's a matter of changing the mindset, helping them to, to really recognize that they have a role to play as well in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. And it does not just end with the, the, the veterinarian administering the drug. Right. Uh, I, I agree with you, uh, Dr. Budenda. When a couple of days back uh, we we released a, a study on on the on assessing the misuse of antibiotics in the dairy sector uh, in India, and it was very clear that you know uh, although not for preventative or growth promotional purposes, but even if it is for disease treatment, you know mm -hmm. there was use of uh, high end critically important antibiotics uh, meant to be preserved for human health that was happening on the ground. And again, withdrawal period was a concern because it's it's three to five days of antibiotic administration and about seven days of yes. withdrawal period. So the livelihood of 12 days mm -hmm. becomes a concern for the farmer. Yeah. Uh, yes. If if uh, and I also agree to when you say that it's a mindset issue. That's a that's a very important point. You know, at the very outset, mm -hmm. we have we have agreed to ourselves that we cannot do without antibiotics. Uh, that is true. That's important. Uh, it's mm -hmm. important for uh, the, the the livelihood mm -hmm. and to continue and the health of the animal. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. If I can ask you, uh, what has been those uh, few critical areas where Zambia is engaging in its effort to contain the misuse of antibiotics? Uh, I understand that the multi-sectoral mm -hmm. national action plan of the country puts a very strong focus in this area and and where have where have you moved what has been those those years okay um with the national action plan against antimicrobial resistance um we have been fully engaged uh together with the ministry of health um, and the ministry responsible for the environment in ensuring that whatever measures are put in place whatever policies are are developed do take everybody into account and um, that the uniqueness of these sectors is actually uh, considered. So I think in Zambia, we, we have actually um, achieved quite a bit in working together. Um, but then also there are certain things that are unique to the different sectors. And um, when you talk about things like withdrawal period, that doesn't really you know matter with probably the health sector, except that they're at the, at the end of the, of the chain when it comes to that, but it all kind of falls into the lap of the veterinarian um, uh, to ensure that, that um, the animal products that are produced are actually safe for the human being in the end. And so um, in line with that, um, we have come up with um, a national roadmap um, for the elimination of antimicrobials uh, in, in, in food animals. And um, although this will take probably some legislation to be put in place and some policies to be passed, um, at least it is something to start with. Um, I believe that it is very important to put our thoughts down on paper and plan so that when resources allow, then you, you do the next thing, you know. So once you have the plan in place, then at least it is easier to, to find ways of implementing it. Um, rather than just sitting back and letting things be. So uh, even though resources are limited, it is very important to actually plan 
so that when resources are available, you can then move into implementing what it is that you had wanted to do. Um, so the national uh, roadmap for uh, the elimination of antimicrobial use in food animals has concentrated mainly on, um, on poultry and on um, dairy animals, because these are ones that produce animal products every day. And um, there's a very high consumption of, of, um, of eggs, of milk within the, com within the country. Um, we do have the commercial um, um, manufacturers, or should I say, uh, users of, of, of the milk, um, buyers of the milk, who will test for antimicrobial residues um, in the milk that they purchase for further processing. To, these are commercial milk processors. Um, but we do have also a large quantity of milk that is consumed um, on the farm, you know, in the household that is not subjected to these tests. So that is something that we would like to see happen. Like all the milk that is consumed at some point should have, should be free of antimicrobials. We should be able to say our milk is free of, of antimicrobial residues. Um, with the poultry sector, we've actually gone a step further of actually engaging poultry farmers um, in workshops to help them understand their role. Uh, with the poultry farmers, you have eggs being produced, you have uh, chickens being produced for meat, and um, then you also have um, uh, chickens being kept for a long time, um, which are probably not consumed or, or slaughtered every day, but they, they still end up being consumed at some point. So with all these, we have done our best to try and engage them and talk to them about withdrawal periods and, and how that um, if antimicrobial residues are found in, the, in their products, um, it's a danger to human health and so forth. So with the poultry farmers, we've had workshops with them where we've discussed these things and, and you know outlined for them everything to do with antimicrobial resistance and their part in ensuring that um, the food is safe for human consumption. Um, we are still working to get the dairy farmers um, uh, into a workshop as well. Um, but it's a, it's a very big task because this is, it's, it's a nationwide thing and it costs money. Um, but at least if you can, you know, go bit by bit, you'd have covered some ground. Um, even though it's district by district, at least you'd have covered ground. And news does spread, you know, farmers talk to each other. So when you speak to one group of farmers, at least maybe uh, you multiply that maybe by two of at the end, maybe the number of farmers that will know what it's about and what to avoid and, and what needs to be done in terms of administration of antimicrobials. Um, we also have the, the Zambia Medicines Regulatory Authority that is uh, looking to put in uh, measures to ensure that the, the feed premixes do not have antimicrobials um, in them. Um, so that is something which is currently on the table and um, uh, receiving a lot of attention, um, some resistance as well, but um, at the end of it all is for our own good that we, we put in these strict measures to ensure that, that the food we eat is safe. Right. Yes. So, so if I can, if I can uh, pick up the key points which you just mentioned, it's a, it's a mix of policy level efforts with a lot of awareness generation among among the uh, farmers who are doing it and also very yes. interesting to know about the roadmap you know uh, while, mm -hmm. while i do agree that it, it takes policy level uh, tools to support the taking the roadmap to where it should be but that the roadmap is there is very interesting and and, and i'm hopeful that other countries also uh, think on these lines but uh, if i can Take this question a little further and uh, you you hinted yourself while answering that it costs money you know workshops bringing them together it costs effort it needs money uh, and of course there there is an element of resistance which uh, let's not be in denial it is there so mm -hmm. in this entire process that you you are you just mentioned in the efforts that you've been making 
uh, what are those challenges uh, that that you have been facing what makes it difficult and not easy um because when you come to talk about antimicrobials and limiting their use um you 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 need to first of all deal with why are they being used you see so mostly we find that they're used because people are taught that probably chicks up to this age must have antimicrobials otherwise they die you know from whatever disease is and that is included in in their formula in the feed formulation and so forth so that is one thing so it's like it's a mindset people think that is what needs to happen and if it doesn't happen they're going to lose their 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 livestock or their 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 chickens and then another thing that needs to be considered is also the the manufacturers of like the premixes and so forth because they include those things in their premixes sometimes um, it becomes an issue of business now so you also have have to deal with that aspect as well, um, because if you do not become strict with your enforcement and your legislation regarding that, then you, you'll be fighting an uphill battle and a losing battle most of the time. Um, another challenge actually that, that we have in Zambia is the smuggling in of unregistered um, products. So when these find themselves in the feed or uh, even just with farmers, um, it could be antimicrobials themselves, it could be premixes that are made outside the country and they're smuggled in. It's very difficult to actually be able to, to, to find out who is doing what because it's all smuggled, it's underground, it's illegal. So unless the public comes up to say, we have seen this, or if you're out in the field and you see it, then you raise the alarm. You know, it, otherwise it's very difficult to know what is really out there. Um, so that is where you find that we all have to work together. Because if um, if the farmers are seeing something being brought to them by briefcase uh, businessmen, um, they should know that, okay, this thing doesn't look quite right. You know, there is something in here that, you know, shouldn't be, that they, they should know that there is something in here that's not supposed to be or that this thing is not registered to be in the country. So sensitization is very important of the public, um, sensitization of the farmers, sensitization of, of, uh, of veterinarians, of uh, para-veterinary para uh, professionals is also very, very important because everybody needs to work together in this fight. Um, another challenge obviously is resource. Um, it needs money, anything you, you, to do with uh, implementation of policies and and even enforcement or formulation of legislation requires funding and so this is another challenge um, so in order for us not to feel so dampened by that we've taken it as an association that the best we can do is work on the sensitization aspect and the, the plan is there for the legislation and so forth and all that when the money is there to happen but for now Let's try and work to change people's mindset. Let's try to raise awareness of the dangers of, of antimicrobial resistance so that even when that legislation does come through, um, it will not be so difficult for it to be implemented because people will already know what needs to happen and what is right and what is wrong and how to take care of the animals without having to use antimicrobials. So we are talking a lot also with the people who uh, teach animal production, um, and the best uh, uh, things to do with biosecurity and things like that, so that the farmers know that they don't need to have antimicrobials in the feed from day one. So they know that they can actually raise their chicks um, without the use of antimicrobials as um, a preventive uh, uh, measure. Right. Uh, so, so thank you very much, Dr. Mudenda, for, for putting this in, in perspective, you know, highlighting uh, very nicely the challenges. But I also understand that a lot of, lot of the effort uh, is currently from Zambia going into making farmers and veterinarians aware. And so that going forward, implementation of laws and policies uh, is easy you know, uh, mm -hmm. than what it would have been otherwise. Uh, I would now like to go to uh, a 
a different thing, a different topic, which is which is often talked about, is that we often say that we should learn from best practices uh, across the world, and very often we have we have seen examples from developed countries like uh, Sweden, uh, Denmark, Netherlands, mm. where, where things are, are are better, are in fact more than better. They have been able to mm -hmm. take long steps uh, uh, over a number of years back. Mm -hmm. And the the key point that we get to hear is, you know, situations are different. This cannot work in, in these kind of settings. So uh, what are your thoughts around this? Can we draw from best practices at least and, and uh, implement them, mold them, customize them in our own ways? And, and then how should LMICs move towards this? Why are there best practices then if, if they cannot work in other settings? Um. I think, as you have said, it is very important to know your own environment um, and what can work and what can't work. Um, in highly developed countries like Sweden, like you have mentioned and so forth, um, they have very organized systems um, with the, the regulations of, veter of, of veterinary medicines. They have very well organized systems with um, even the farmers and the, the, you know, just the farming community, you know. So um, we are coming from a background of um, subsistence farming. You know, it's done in the backyard, it's done on, in, you know, in the village, it's, uh, without a lot of outside influence. And um, now we have a lot of what we call bar backyard farmers, especially for poultry and things like pigs, you know, where they're really just on a very small piece of land and they build a structure in the back where they keep these animals, you know, and these people are probably not even registered with any organization. So it is very difficult to track them and to know exactly who is doing what. So this is a very different situation from what pertains uh, probably in Sweden and other developed countries where the laws for, for instance, bylaws of a city say you cannot keep animals like this and so forth, they actually are enforced and you, you, you have no chance of doing something like that without the proper paperwork. Um, so in our environment, it will take years for us to get to a point where we can say, we know all the, all the farmers that are keeping poultry for business. We know all the farmers that are keeping pigs for business. You know, it will take a very long time. So um, what, what I see that we can take away from what they have done is how they have been able to enforce their legislation. I know it has taken years, it has taken years, and obviously they must have had some resistance along the way, but these things come from, you know, different sectors working together. If we have local government, which is looking at, at um, housing and, and um, uh, what people are doing around their homes and how many animals they're keeping and things like that, we have local government, working with Ministry of Health, working with the veterinary um, uh, ministry as well, you, you will find that it becomes easier to enforce some of these things rather than people working in isolation. So with the national action plan that Zambia has come up with, there is a very strong emphasis on One Health. And this applies a lot to antimicrobial resistance. And in the beginning, when it was being developed, you, you could sense the pool, you know, from the different sectors, but we are like this, but we do this, but we do this like this and so forth. But where we have reached at this point, uh, we've reached a point where everybody respects the other. And we all know we are all important in our different sectors. And if we don't work together on this, it's going to be a disaster. So um, having reached that level of appreciation for each other, I think it'll be much easier going forward um, because there is that unity of purpose now. And um, this now needs to trickle down so that it's not only at the national level where the big decisions are being made, but even at the district level, there has to be that, that uh, unity as well. So where you have the local authority who basically look after the public health, and then you also have the Ministry of Health, you also have the, the, the Ministry of Fishes and Livestock where the veterinary uh, industry falls, and then you also have uh, the, the ministry that is concerned with the environment all working together, all understanding each other. It becomes so much easier even to set up policies because you know 
you're not going to step on each other's toes, but you're going to complement each other. Right. Uh, yeah. But but thank you for ending this on such a beautiful note. You know, you just uh, you yeah. just mentioned something which we have been trying to uh, push, particularly this World Antimicrobial Awareness Week, which is the concept of One Health and why it is it is a must if we have to slow down this this chronic pandemic of AMR. Um, yes. My last question uh, or last comment would be: uh, What is it that that you would like? to uh, convey to, to the veterinarians as well as to the farmers, given your experience. Uh, you know, this is an issue. This is a, a, a topic which is uh, not, not easy. Uh, it, it needs a lot of thinking, a lot of collaboration, a lot of people uh, working on the ground to, to even move certain things. So mm -hmm. in terms of the farmer veterinarian relationship, what is it that you have to, uh, what is that key message that you would like to give them? in the context mm -hmm. of AMR? The first thing I'd like to say is that not every illness is, needs antimicrobials. Not every disorder needs antimicrobials. It is very important for farmers to work closely with their veterinarian so that the veterinarian knows the environment in which these animals are being kept and they can advise beyond just giving a jab or mm -hmm. prescribing treatment that they can advise in a holistic way. And so for farmers, please get to know your local vet, seek them out, ask them questions, you know, bother them so that they help you take care of your animals in a better way so that at the end of the day, we're all eating healthy animal products. And also for the veterinarians, that is very important for you to get to know your clients, know where they're coming from, what they have to deal with, their um, shortcomings and everything so that when you are treating their animals, you would know what it is they can manage to do and what they cannot manage to do, and you can tailor your treatment accordingly. And um, again, not every disorder needs an antimicrobial. Thank you. Right, that's a, that's a very pertinent and a strong message, Dr. Mm -hmm. Mudenda. And if I can just summarize uh, this this little conversation that we've had, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of takeaway messages that has come out, apart from the fact that we've heard the, the experiences from Zambia and somehow uh, they align well or they relate well to what we see in our country as well. Uh, first and foremost, I think what what you highlighted is the the importance of working together. I think that has come out in, in all of the uh, themes that we discussed and, and the importance of everybody coming together. And very much so we see in the COVID, uh, COVID context, everybody came together to, to fight the pandemic. And even uh, it applies to AMR, which is another uh, you know, pandemic, uh, it's already there. So. The importance mm -hmm. of coming together, the importance of not working in silos and making each other understand, having respect for each other. So it's beyond uh, containing antibiotic misuse in humans or animals or the environment. It's about one health. The mm -hmm. second thing which I take away from this discussion is uh, the importance of mindset. Uh, again, mm -hmm. that, that has been discussed a couple of times is that we have we have tuned ourselves to believe that the situation is like this and it cannot work without uh, an additional chemical input. Maybe that's not the case and we could look at other options of better farm hygiene, biosecurity, vaccination, and early disease uh, diagnosis, uh, low cost kits for uh, detecting them uh, quite early. And all of this could, could help. Uh, it's, it's just in the mind. That that yeah. is there. That that is one part of it, um, and also lastly, that the importance of a farmer veterinarian connect. Uh, the message mm -hmm. that you said, you know, get to know each other, you know, talk to each mm -hmm. other, bother each other, which is, I think, right now, uh, another issue is the important the the lack of the farmer to veterinarian ratio, uh, given mm -hmm. the number of farmers and the number of beds. It's not possible for yes. even a veterinary extension officer to reach out to so many farmers, if I can talk yes. from our experiences. So mm -hmm. one is to strengthen that ratio. Second is to you know build more connect uh, between the two. And even the concept of incentivizing farmers to be able to mm -hmm. uh, 
work uh, something to work towards uh, uh, preserving the human health and mm-hmm. and also their livelihood in parallel okay mm-hmm. so so thank you very much dr mudenda if you have anything to tell us uh, this world awareness week we would love to hear <laughs> so thank you for having me okay it's been really nice talking to you on behalf of the center for science and environment we are really grateful and we thank you for being part of this video conversation uh, we just hope stakeholders who watched us today uh, take away messages from this discussion and have things to uh, ponder upon and you can reach out to us at csc or dr mudenda uh, for more details thank you thank you